What's up, Wolfpack fam? It's your boy, Kid, back at it again. Hope you're doing well. Continuing my journey of Dad's Army with Jonesy Manor and Wilson and the rest of the crew. What shenanigans are they going to get into in this week's episode? I got to stay tuned to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, though, snacks is not included. Damn it, you got to bring your own. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Absolutely free to do. Shout out to the patrons as well. Thanks for your support. Links are always in the description section. If you're curious for that, just another way of helping out the channel. You also help out the channel just by liking, commenting, and watching. So uh, let's get this one started. Snacks not included. Let's freaking go. Turn on the A21, but he comes home each evening and he's ready with his gun. So who do you think you are kidding, Mr. Hitler? If you think old England done. What are you going to have, Wilson? Well, uh... I think I'll have toad in the hole, sir. I think I'll try the fish and potato pie. Yeah. Well, you better get it in the, in the queue before the, the rush starts. Yes, right. Soup? <laughs> 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 uh, no, thank you, no. Uh, could I have a, a piece of toad in the hole, please? Thank you. One toad. Thank you. Uh, I wonder, do you, do you think I could have a, just a little bit more toad? I'm sorry, only half a toad per portion per person. There's a wall on you now, next. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of fish is it? Snook. I beg your pardon? Snook! <laughs> Could I have the toad in the hole instead, please? <laughs> I wish you'd make up your mind. Oh, shit. It's all like snot. Nice and sweet. Uh, yes, please, yes. Your... Next. Uh, fish pie, please. Oh, um, well, what sort of fish is that? Snook. Can I have the toad in the hole instead? <laughs> oh, blimey, another one. Look, I'm not having this old lark. Listen, the fish pie snook. Got it? Snook. Next. That bad guy? Pudding. Yes, please. With or without? With, please. Hey, I saw that. I beg your pardon? Don't hmm? you come that old lardy da talk with me. Put one of those bits of bread back. You know you're only allowed one. It says so up there. Don't forget there's a war on. I'm hardly likely to forget it, am I? And don't forget to take your dirties back to the hatch. I always do. Oh, no, you don't. You left your dirties on that table yesterday. I've got enough to do without clearing up your dirties. Now, look here, please. I don't oh, sit down, Wilson. <laughs> Jesus. Making an exhibition of yourself. <coughs> bread pudding. He's fierce, No, guys. just the custard, please. Oh. I have to watch my figure, you know. <laughs> I think you've got a nice figure. My friend and I think you look just like a great big teddy bear, don't we, Betty? Oh, yes. You have a great big cuddly teddy bear. Oh, you really think so? Hang on. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mannering. Uh, you got my steak ready, Doreen. Oh, yes. Go and get Mr. Walker's steak, Betty. Oh, coming out. Mr. Walker's steak! Oh, man. <laughs> He's a king. Oh, there you are, Mr. Walker. Tell love. What are you doing with that steak, Walker? I'm going to eat it, aren't I? <laughs> There's two weeks' meat ration there. I've got toad in the hole. You want to watch that? That can be very nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Why are serving you with a steak? They're not. I brought it in. They cooked it for me. Oh, uh, by the way, ladies, hang on. I've, uh, I've got your elastic here. Oh. Don't want them falling down on the job, do we? <laughs> <laughs> Right, just take for the tea, will we, love? Look here, Walker. Flaunting your black market food in here, you'll get the platoon a bad name. Yeah, yeah look, ju now, just a minute, Mr. Manning. Look, I don't want to be rude, but I'm not in uniform and I'm not on parade. And what's more, I'm a come out customer at your bank and I've got a deposit account with over 1,500 quid in it. So if you don't mind, I'll just have me dinner. <laughs> he told you, sucker. Mine's one and two. To be exact, he's got 1,542. Go find another table, Pike. <laughs> <laughs> In the doghouse. Out of the rank and file eating with us. <laughs> Do you want some pickle, Pikey? Yes, please, Joe. Hey, I haven't seen any of this since before the war. Do you want some pickle, Mr. Marin? No, thank you. Not with toad in the hole. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> 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 
Hello, Coke. Hello, mate. Hello, Mr. Manrin. I called round the bank, but I just missed you. I've come to say goodbye. Look, don't tell me you got your calling up papers at last, Jonesy. <laughs> yeah. Listen, give those boars hell for me, will you? And Jonesy, if you don't come back, can I have that ten bob you borrowed? There's no call for you to try and be funny, Joe. If you want that ten shillings, you can have it. I was only joking, I was only joking. Sit down, Joe. Everybody's staring at you. Well, let them stare, Mr. Manning. I wear this uniform with pride, I do. Mr. Jones, those mothballs went in our dinner. Well, don't shout it about. Everyone will want one. <laughs> do sit down, Jones. Yes, showing yes. us up. Yes, all right, sir, all right, sir. sir. <laughs> I do with staring Where at Where exactly are you going? I'm going to London tonight, sir. It's the 42nd annual reunion for the veterans of the Battle of Omdurman, sir. Really? Yes, you know, I, I served in that campaign with some distinction, you know. I should have been mentioning dispatches, but I think they ran out of paper. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last cavalry charge made by the British Army. I'd like to show you it was very exciting. I showed oh, no, you no, no, no. Yeah. Not just now, Jones, please. Well, no. I, 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 I hang on. Time, I, 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 all right, I'm only going to borrow them. Oh. You see, there were these two huge rocks, you see. Huge rocks like that. You see, like that. And General Kitchener, he was over here. And the Mad Mardi, he was over here. All of a sudden, you see, there was this great big bugle call. <laughs> like that. And all these, these, these dervishes and, 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 and all that lot, they come rushing towards us, uh, fuzzy wuzzies, and charging away like anything. And General Kitchener, he was standing on his horse there, or were rather sitting on it, and he was, he was as cute as a cucumber. And he said, steady boys. Don't shoot till you see the red of their eyes. <laughs> I think he said the white of their eyes, didn't he? Yeah, he did say white, but he should have said red, you see, because all that dust and sand there makes your eyes red. Ah. And, and makes you, <laughs> get a lot of bloodshot eyeballs, you see. You get a lot of bloodshot eyeballs in the desert. I don't mean lying around in the sand on their own. I mean, you just get chance your head, you know. <laughs> Okay, you finished with my pickle? No, I haven't finished yet, you see. So, anyway, these dervishes and fuzzy boys, they charged at us remorsefully, you see. And we kept repulsing them, repulsing them. And then they come at us with those great big choppers. And they were chopping off heads left, right and centre. And there was blood everywhere. And the corpses, the corpses, <laughs> they were actual they were. Oh, it was terrible. Hey, you don't have battles like that anymore, you know. No. I'm Me here. Well, Mr. Manning, I'll leave you to enjoy your dinner. So, you know, my man's saying so, I seem to have somehow lost my appetite. Uh -huh. Yes, so have I. We can't waste food in wartime, can uh, we? Mr. Walker, mind if I have some of your pickle? No, 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 you help yourself. Might help to make it a little more palatable. Yes, right, yes. Yeah, hang on. I don't want to worry you, Mr. Wilson, but I think one of Jones's mothballs fell in the pickle, and I think Mr. Manning's just sitting there. What? <laughs> How the hell? Excuse me, do you mind about this? Aye, aye, aye! What about your dirties? Mind what? Go and take your dirties back to the edge. Just clear away, will you please? Captain Manning, to the right! Lacking. Oh, shit, this lady. Excuse me, sir. Private Fraser is outside waiting to introduce his new recruit, sir. Bring them in, will you? Right, sir, right. All right, Fraser, you can bring your friend in now. <laughs> sir, I'd like to introduce Mr. George Clark. He wants to join our rank, sir. Good evening, Mr. Clark. Good evening, sir. Whoa. I'd hazard a guess that you'd served in the army before, Mr. Clark. That's correct, sir. You, uh, you know Mr. Clark well? I sir, do that, sir. And you've known him for some time? Oh, I sir, I love that, sir. And you'd say that he was a man of integrity? And very generous, sir. He stood me several drinks in the bar at the Anchor. <laughs> last <Friday> night. Mm. <laughs> when did you first meet him? In the bar at the Anchor last Sunday. <laughs> Three drinks. Well, tell us about yourself, Mr. Clark. Uh, well, sir. 
As you've guessed, sir, I've been a regular soldier all my life. I retired about ten years ago, and I've only been living in Wilmington on sea for a few weeks. When did you first join the army? Forty-four years ago, sir, 1897. A year later, in 1898, I served in the Sudan under General Kitchener at the Battle of Omdurmanthar. Good heavens. Oh, That's shit. a coincidence, eh? Yes. <laughs> Don't suppose you came across a Lance Corporal Jones by any chance? You can't expect me to remember that, sir. The thousands of men took part in that battle. Sir. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I realise that. I was only joking. I was in the Warwickshire Regiment, sir. Yeah, but Jones was in the Warwickshire, sir. Yes, yes, he was. It was a long time ago, sir, but as a matter of fact, come to think of it, I do seem to remember one Jones. He was always a bit behind everyone else with his drill. He won, he won a Lance Corporal, though. That's him, that's him. He, well, he was near Lance Corporal, you see. No, he's just an ordinary private. Just an ordinary private. Did he hear that, Mr. Manor? Eh? Hey, the man's in the never was a Lance Corporal. Never, never. All right, all right. Never, all right. All right. Shut up, Fraser. All right, all right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Shut up, Fraser. Well, we'll just have to wait till tomorrow to see if it's the same man. Now, I'd like to come about half an hour before parade, Clark. Tomorrow, so that we can fit you up with the uniform. Yes, sir. I'll just swear you in in the meantime. Hand me the Bible, Wilson. <laughs> what Bible? <laughs> Bible to swear him in with. Well, I haven't got a Bible. <laughs> I distinctly remember asking you to bring the Bible along. No, 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 sir. The word Bible never ever passed your lips. <sighs> How can I swear him in without the Bible? Well, hurry up, Godfrey. There's only 20 minutes to parade. I uh, shan't be a minute, sir. Haven't you got a pair of braces? Oh, I always wear a belt to keep me trousers up. Oh, you should wear braces, you know, otherwise you are not dressed right. If I wear braces, I certainly won't be able to dress right. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you find him a better blouse than that? Best I can do at the moment, sir. The, uh, the customer's rather an awkward size. Well, you'll have to alter it, that's all. Must have you smartly turned out, Clark. This is a very efficient unit. When do I start training, sir? Well, I'm afraid there's no time for that. You'll just have to pick it up as you go along. <laughs> I tell you, this fella Clark says he knew Jones in the Sudan. But that was back in 1800 and frozen stiff. I mean, how would he remember after all these years? Aye, but this fella says that the Jones he knew was always a beat behind everybody else when they were drilling. It still doesn't prove anything, Mr. Fraser. Oh, so oh, God. God. snitch. Oh, you do not look rough, Josie. How did the reunion of the Battle of Omdi Bum Bum go? <laughs> Omdurman, Omdurman. I bet you and your mates were reliving that fighting all over again. We had a very nice time, Phil. You were drunk, were he? Drunk? No, I wasn't drunk. I just had a rather convivial evening, that's all. Uh -huh. Well, Mr. Manring wants to see you in his office. Oh, right. Uh, head on. Come on, boys. We don't want to miss this. Oh, God. Come in. Gotta be good. Lance Corporal Jones to see you, sir. All right, all right, friends. I don't need you to show me in the office. Evening, sir. Evening, Corporal. I want to introduce you to Private Clark, our new recruit. Oh, how'd you do? Hello, Jonesy. You remember me? No, I don't think I do. Of course you do. 14789 Private Clark. Hello, Nobby. Hello, mate. Oh. Long time no see, eh? Yes, yes, a long time. You remember me now, don't you? Yes, I remember you now, Nobby, yes. Yeah, I remember you, mate. <laughs> I remember you very, very well. <laughs> well uh -oh. It's nearly time for the parade, sir. I'll go and follow men in. Right. Well, give me a chance Indeed. to introduce Clark to the rest of the platoon. Yeah. This way, Clark. Mm. See, he shags this lady. Shut the door. Ah, uh -huh. you see that? You see that? See what? Ah, uh, I tell you, I have a kind of a notion that these two, Clark and Jones, didn't like each other very much. <laughs> you not an old mixer, Taffy. Uh, maybe, but there's something about between those two that Jones doesn't want us to know about. <laughs> really, Mr. Fraser, I, I can't believe that. Can't he? I can't. There's no smoke without fire. No smoke without fire. Where are the boys of the old Where are the well, you see, after parade, I took this fellow Clark along for a drink. And when he had stood me a couple of pints, uh, I came out to them directly. I says, tell me, what did happen between you and Jones? He, he was very evasive about the whole affair, but 
From what I could gather, reading between the lines and putting two and two together, it seems that these two of them, they were out on patrol. And somehow, they got captured. Well, Jones managed to escape and he left this fella, Clark, in the desert to die. Mind you, there may not be any truth in it, but... <laughs> <laughs> what I always say is, there's no smoke without fire. No smoke without fire. Look at that lovely moon, Joe. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, very nice. <laughs> What's up with you tonight? Well, I've got a lot of things on my mind. Oh, makes a change. You've usually only got one thing on your mind. <laughs> Come uh, on, give us a kiss. No, wait a minute, love. There's a time and place for everything. But this is the time and the place. Don't you love me anymore? Yeah, of course I love you. I'm mad about you. <laughs> it's just I'm worried about Jonesy. You know, I asked him straight out if there was any truth in his story about him leaving his fellow in the desert, you know, leaving him in the lurch, and, well, he... He wouldn't say anything. He wouldn't even deny it. Look, are you going to give me a kiss or not? Oh, yeah, well, I suppose so. I mean, I'm sitting here, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! The man. You asleep, Elizabeth? Mm. You know, I can't help thinking it would be better to sleep inside the house when there isn't a raid on. <laughs> <laughs> the shelter's very damp. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. That's no good. I... I can't sleep. I'm going to have a read. Jesus. <laughs> you know, I'm sure you'd be much more comfortable if I were on the top bunk. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you, Raymond. Oh. Why did you leave your friend in the desert to die? Is that Fraser did that shit, probably? There's no room in Warmington on sea for a coward. I like Frasier, guys. <laughs> Two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> oh. A coward like you is not even worth a whole white feather, so I'm sending you a half a one. <laughs> uh, Raymond? Yes, Mr. Jones. Raymond? Yeah. I want you to look after the shop for a little while. There's something I've got to do. What's that, Mr. Jones? Something I should have done a long time ago, boy. That's the only way. That's the only way. Oh, boy. Right, gentlemen. I intend to get to the bottom of this once and for all. Now, Clark, supposing you tell us exactly what did happen between you and Jones in the desert. Well, sir. We was on patrol and we was captured by the dervishes. They pegged me out in the sand. Jones, well, he begged for mercy. They took him with them. Well, somehow he managed to escape. He did not come back for me. He left me to die, he did. Well, I must have passed out, but I, I can just remember this native bending over me, going through my pockets. But when I come to, I was in hospital. That native must have saved my life, even if he did pinch me wallet. <laughs> <laughs> I still find it very hard to believe that Jones would have left you to die. Well, then why has he cleared off? I'll tell you why I've cleared off. Jones, where have you been? For Mr. Speak, sir. First of all, I'd like to thank you for having faith in me, sir. Up to now, my lips have been sealed. But now I can reveal myself in my true light and tell you what really happened. You see, sir, it all occurred a few days before the Battle of Omdurman. Oh, shit. Give me one sec, guys. My headset is dying. Uh, I do apologize, guys. Hold up a sec. Sorry, guys.
Oh, geez. Okay. Sorry. Private Clark and I were part of a patrol sent out by General Kitchener to find out the strength of the Maldi's army. The patrol was under the commander, Colonel Smythe, a tall, resolute man of iron who scarcely spoke a word. The other officer was a young, raw second lieutenant. <laughs> he was the colonel's nephew. There was also a young cockney, Private Green. He kept our spirits up with jokes and merry quips. The sergeant was Sergeant Ironside, a nasty, coarse fellow who kept giving us the rough side of his tongue. Oh, shit. I knew that patrol was doomed from the start. As I looked up, I could see vultures wheeling overhead, waiting to pick our bones. And then, as we rounded a corner, there was an old Farker blocking our path. <laughs> turn back, turn back, <laughs> said the old Farker. <laughs> Let me take you in his hand. And before the sun sinks, all of you will be dead. Uh, Rabbit, oh. said the Colonel. Clear out the way, you old fool. <laughs> Do Fuck not it. go against the will of Allah, said the old Farker. <laughs> written in the sand, it's written in the sand. None of us took much notice of him as we all marched past. However, as we drew level with him, the sergeant gave him a mouthful of coarse abuse. <laughs> this seemed to upset the old fucker. <laughs> he said, come to the sergeant in Arabic. I didn't understand what it was at the time, but later I learned it was a curse upon us all. Well, we didn't have long to wait before the words of the fucker came true. About midday, when the sun was scorching down like a great big burning brass ball, suddenly, without a word of warning, a fusillade of shots rang out. Set cover! Set cover! over to the lieutenant and cradled him in my arms. To think of this young boy dying out here in the foreign burning desert. It was too much to bear. Thank you, Jones. You're a good chap. It's dashed hard luck at happening like this. I, I want you to promise me something. What's that, sir? When, when, when you get back to England, I want you to go and see my mater. Yes, sir. T tell her... Tell her I couldn't help it. You couldn't help what, sir? Falling off my horse. <laughs> Holy shit, bro. Keep your... <laughs> heads down. <laughs> Uncle Arthur. Yes, Franklin. In case we don't get out of this alive, something I want to ask you. Uh, what is it? It's about you and Mater. Well, I'd rather you didn't ask. Right. <laughs> I won't. That's it. Don't. <laughs> Holy roll! That's <laughs> Sergeant. There's thousands of them. Shut up. Keep your... <laughs> We managed to creep out during the night, and the next morning we were on our way for help. Little did we realize that at that moment, nasty savage eyes was watching our every move. All the time the sun was beating down on us, and we had to stop for a rest. It's then we realized our water bottles were empty. Suddenly we looked up. There were two horrible dervishes looking down at us. <laughs> <laughs> we were trapped, caught by the dervishes. We knew what we were in for. I was ready to take my medicine like a man. When all of a sudden, Private Clark flung himself down in the sand and groveled and begged for mercy. I couldn't stand it. I had to look away. Those dervishes didn't know the meaning of mercy. They pegged Clark out in the sand 
and left him there to die. They dragged me behind them for miles. What fate was in store for me, I had no means of knowing. <laughs> After hours of this torture, we stopped and they started to cook a meal. Suddenly, one of them said something. The other pulled out a dagger. Next minute, they were at each other's throats. What the freak? They fought like demons. I realized this was my chance. They weren't taking any notice of me, so I worked my way over to the fire. I burnt through the ropes. <laughs> and I managed to stick it. <laughs> Suddenly, one of the dervishes broke away, jumped on his horse and made off. He'd had enough. The other dervish shouted something after him. <laughs> Then I remember that dervishes can't stand fire. They just can't stand it. I quickly seized a burning brand from the fire and thrust it in front of his face. The effect was amazing. He turned from a proud warrior into a gibbering idiot. His nostrils distended with fear. <laughs> then he shouted, Om ka ya ka ka ka, Om ka ya ka 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 ka. Which translated literally means, put that light out. Put that light out. <laughs> I made him take his robes off. I had him at my mercy. I quickly put them on over my uniform, took the horse, and before you could say knife, I was hurrying back to rescue Private Clark. When I got back, I thought Clark was a goner. I cut the ropes, took his wallet out of his tunic to send home with his personal effects. I opened it, and inside I saw something that in spite of the heat made my blood run cold. There was a photograph of the Colonel's lady. The Colonel, sir, was a very upstanding gentleman, but his wife was not quite so upstanding. <laughs> I think that she and this private clerk had been... Uh, I couldn't believe it. While I was kneeling there in a daze of misery, I heard a groan. Clark wasn't dead after all. Well, Mr. Manning, I got him on the horse, and after a nightmare journey through the desert, we came across the relief column. Well, Private Clark was taken back to headquarters, and I never saw him again until last week. And then, sir, I've got to tell you something. I kept that secret locked in my bosoms <laughs> all those years. The secret that nobody knew except Private Clark, the Colonel's lady, and myself. Why on earth couldn't you have told us this before? Well, I couldn't, could I, sir? While I thought there was still a chance that the Colonel's lady and the Colonel himself was still alive. That's where I've been the last two days. See, I went up to Somerset House, didn't I, looking through the records. And I'm happy to say that the Colonel and his good lady are now up in that great parade ground somewhere in the sky. <laughs> where, the breath, where the breath of scandal cannot touch them, sir. And now at last I've got a chance to burn these letters. I'm sorry, Jones. Right. Now I'll deal with Clark. I think he went outside a few minutes ago, sir. Well, why didn't you stop him? Well, uh, he's not going to get away with this, you know. Right. Come on, after him. Right. He lied. Fucking Fraser. You're in, Henri, aren't you? Did you see a man leave here about two minutes ago? Yeah, he was rushing towards the station. Said he had a train to catch. The station? Right, come on. Right. I shouldn't bother, mate. He gave me a message. I'm to tell you he's very sorry. He's had to resign, and he'll post a uniform back to you. He can't do that. Desertion's a serious crime, ain't it? Yes, it is. Very. What are you going to do? Put him up against the wall and shoot at him with water pistols or thrash him with a wet lettuce? What's <laughs> <laughs> here about? Just clear off, will you? Mike, yes, sir. jump on a bicycle, see if we can catch him. He's not worth bothering about, sir. Let him go. No, I didn't like him. My mum said never trust anybody with their eyes too close together. <laughs> Moving finger writes and having writ moves on. What's that got to do with it? Wait, <laughs> I don't know, sir. Oh, Here, come please. on, Josie. You can burn that photo and those letters now. And forget all about it. Here we go, mate. Here. Here. What do you think you're doing? You go on raving mad, an enemy plane will set out for miles away. Ah, oh, shut up. Put that light out! <laughs> Put that light out! Put it, Put it out! Put that light out! He kills me, man. He's great, man. Oh, man. I love this show, guys. Never doubt my boy.
Put that light out. Put that light out. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you if you made it this far, man. That reenactment shit was awesome. Hold on a second. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, we hope you have a good weekend. One second, ladies and gentlemen. What's that got to do with it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man, but ladies and gentlemen, a dope episode. Um, Godfrey having like, I don't know, some poetic moment there. It sounded cool as shit, although I have no clue what the hell that uh, that line was. Maybe you guys can fill me in if you know, but I was clueless in that scenario there. But um, and I think everybody else seemed to be clueless in that moment there, too. Uh, you know, with uh, Mannering like, what's that got to do with it? So. This was such a great episode, a lot of great parts on this, but man, it always, it still amazes me how well um, Walker is, like, you know, like how much people, you know, um, how many people, like, essentially look out for him to hook them up, essentially, I guess, if that's the best way I can say it, you know, he's the hookup, he's got the things, and man, he's living like a king right there, because he was getting a meal um, that got everybody essentially jealous, man, that steak was looking scrum delicious, and yeah, it was like a big ass portion there, so, you know, Walker's got the hookup for the ladies, you, you can see that, like, he is just smooth with it that, to me, when I'm looking at him, ladies are just melting, you know? It's like melting, man. Um, especially, he had the lady there. She's like, can you kiss me already? He's like, oh, well, all right, man. So, you know, Walker just comes off as as the man to me in a lot of moments. Uh, you know, obviously, a lot of people look to him to, you know, hook him up with a lot of stuff. So, um, I think this was an, another stellar episode, uh, the Two and a Half Feathers. Um, and... Um, you got Frazier stirring that pot, man. Again, man, Frazier stirring the pot. Oh, I knew, you know, I knew this guy's, you know, full of shit and stuff like that. Uh, you know, Frazier, again, he was saying that uh, that fire bit there and it, the zooming in and the eyes and shit. Again, good storyteller, uh, full of shit half the time, but, you know, another great character. Um Frazier stirred the pot, man, and he probably believed it because he was under the influence anyway and shit like that. I mean, you got a guy buying you drinks and drinks. You're not paying a dime, man. This now is becoming your best friend. Did we just become best friends right there? That's a best friend moment right there. So he even convinced this guy to essentially join up on the squad. And then we find out that he served in this essentially the same uh, I guess, like, you know, the platoon that uh, Jonesy, you know, th this guy, the, the hero that we look up to on, on this show, man, uh, the bravest guy. And never did I doubt him for a moment. But um, obviously, with, when you got somebody essentially bashing your name, there's going to be doubts amidst, uh, you know, uh, among the ranks and shit. And, and you felt like Frazier was there to capitalize because he's like, Come on, guys, let's go inside. He want to see the dirt. He want to hear it, uh, you know, firsthand and shit like that. But um, what a great story. Again, I don't doubt Jonesy for a minute because if he was essentially a guy that is a coward, right? Not brave, right? I wouldn't feel, I, I didn't feel like he would volunteer for half these things. You know, a lot of the times that he's volunteering for shit like that, essentially a guy that would like to go on the front lines, let me uh, volunteer and shit. That's, that's bravery. No matter what the scenario is, if you got some money volunteering first, it takes an act of bravery right there. So uh, I don't doubt the story, but uh, you know, that he di didn't do what he says he did. So, um, you know, seeing Jonesy reenact that shit, you have all these guys, uh, uh, you know, uh, you got Pike saying Uncle Arthur in that scenario. I don't know. I don't know. That part didn't make sense to me there. But, oh, man, seeing everybody, uh, that old Fokker shit was, had me dying. And shit. That was such a great moment, such a great scene. Um, and they said it a couple of times, and it just made it funnier as I'm hearing that. I could go back and hear that a couple of thousand times. I love that shit. Um, but, yeah, seeing these guys, you know, reenact uh, what Jonesy is saying. Now you got the little visual element. So I like that because a lot of times you got someone, 
saying a story, but you might not always have the, the visual representation. So I'm a visual guy. So, um, you know, seeing that reenactment it just made it all the more funnier there. And it was qu quite funny that that uh, Clark, you know, his story was that he was abandoned and shit, you know, um, when, jo you know, when he was saying basically like Josie was the guy getting down on his knees and shit. Nah, but that it, w it was freaking him. So he was talking all that smack, but he was the coward and shit. And he ran, you know, he ran away. So um, I'm glad that he is not going to be part of the platoon. Obviously, you had Pikey not uh, liking him as well. But man, this was such a great episode. Uh, let's go with the the um, the opening scene. I thought that um, I guess uh, the dinner lady or the lunch lady um, that she was fierce. She was kind of funny as well. I don't know what the hell that fish was. Uh, I thought she said snot, ladies and gentlemen, in the beginning. So I'm not familiar. I don't really eat fish like that. It, it's it's not anything that I really enjoy. I'm not a seafood kind of guy. Um, but, yeah, I don't really like fish like that. So I have no clue what the hell that fish was. But it didn't seem like anybody liked that fish. I'm going to have to look that shit up. Um because nobody wanted that shit. They, they ended up getting, what, frog and what what was it? Frog in a pond? Some, some shit like that. Uh, but um, the mothball scene was great, man. And, you know, again, Jonesy with his storytelling, grossing the shit out, blood everywhere, blood. That, that make me lose my appetite right there, especially I'm having a good meal and shit. Uh, so the... The pickle bit, you know, mannering running away, that was a great scene. We enjoyed that scene. Um, you know, having this uh, sense of doubt for a minute um, within the ranks and the troops was good moments for me, too. I didn't doubt Jonesy for a minute, but obviously, Frazier, the rest of the guys were doubting. Uh, well, it seemed like some of them were having some questions because even Walker was uh, seemed unsure but we're glad we got to the bottom of this. The reenactment bit, that whole scene was fantastic there. So I just think this was another stellar episode, man. Um, I just enjoyed it from start to finish. This cast is phenomenal. Everyone uh, cracks me up. Again, the warden kills me on uh, many moments there. We did like when... Um, they showed the bad guys. It was, you know, Frazier because he comes off as the bad guy sometimes and and the warden. So that moment there was great. The fire bit, you know, making the guy strip out. He's afraid of the fire and shit. Uh, the, the line that he said that which equates to put that light out, put that light out. <laughs> that shit was great. So uh, another again, like I said, another enjoyable episode. Loving the journey. Look forward to this, you know, watching each episode week to week. Uh, definitely a highlight of my week among the other shows that we watch. And, yeah, I mean, this cast is exceptional. So uh, we will continue enjoying this show. Thank you for accompanying me on my journey. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. We clicky clicky uh, this little thing so that it pops up there. Don't forget to turn on notification bell so you don't miss a beat. Shout out to the Patreons as well. As always, links are in the description section. If you're curious for all that stuff, that is just another way of helping out the channel. But you can also help out the channel simply by just liking commenting watching sharing telling your friends you know the drill thank you guys enjoy your weekend have a great one thanks for stopping in thanks for hanging out we'll see you on the next one peace out